Okay, so this is Cove Studio. I linked it in the chat. People rating their own attractiveness from one to 10 social experiment. And you guys can feel free to rate yourselves in the comments if you would like to. And again, I always rate myself as like, depending on how the rating system is working, I always feel like I'm a versatile six. You either like me or you hate me. I have features that I think in general people like, but like I have very unique ethnic features and people usually like it or they don't. Even my hair, some people hate my hair. So I use my, I, I, I take that into consideration. There are some people you just look at and I'm like, yeah, I think most people, nine out of 10 people would say they're an eight or above. And then some people, most people would say they're like a six or above, or most people would say, that's kind of how I think about the rating systems. And then there's the personal rating systems like what I find beautiful and what I find attractive. And so I would rate someone like um, Tilda Swinston, uh, like a nine, like she's so hot. She's like a 10. She's so hot. Or um, I'm trying to think of another unique and unique person. I like really unique features on a person. So I rate those much higher for my personal scale. But if I'm talking about the sort of quote unquote, a big word here, objective, there's no such thing. Objective one to 10 scale. I think like I try to go with like, what would most people say in general? Um, without knowing that person, just off physicality. And then, I'm sorry, one more caveat. I would say there's a difference between like if you have 10 people in a room, I think you would rate them all differently if you had to. And I think it would be much easier actually to rate people in a room together because it's obvious when you put people next to each other, like who's quote unquote more attractive, right? Oh my God, Stephanie, thank you. Your hair is a 10 though, no question. I mean, I like curly hair, but girls, people rate me less attractive because of my curly hair or more attractive because of my curly hair. I'm gonna give myself a five. I'm gonna go half. Okay, let me see. Um, She's got great skin. I don't know why her skin is so beautiful. It's gorgeous. Is it the filter? I don't know what's happening here. She's got kind of like a tired look, which is interesting. She's got great lips though. Great lips, great cheekbones, honestly. But okay, I could see... Maybe a five, maybe a six, maybe a five. If if 10 is like super, super, super hot. If 10 is like super, super, super hot, most people would be a five or a six, a four, five, six. Most of us are going to be four, five, six. The super, super hot people, I don't know if anyone's in the room right now who's that level, eight, nine, tens or nine, tens. Those are very specific kinds of people. So, okay. She's obviously very pretty though. <laughs> He's very handsome. He's got like a good like shine in his eye, a really great smile, but not an eight or a nine or a 10 probably. Let's see though. <laughs> if I'm being blatantly honest, I would say maybe a two. <laughs> no, mm, he's got great hair. He's got to fix his beard. He could probably dress a little bit better. <clears throat> maybe, it depends, maybe. Maybe a four, but a five or six in shape and groomed, maybe. And again, this is just like assuming if we all had to like put ourselves up against like the hottest people. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. I'm taking into consideration body weight. I'm taking into consideration generally in a room, like truly, like technically most people aren't attracted to bigger people. And that's something that I, I understand every time I got bigger, I definitely got less people into me realistically like people that are chubbier for some reason the general public like isn't as attracted to them and I don't think that's learned I think that's evolution but I also think like when you're in love with a consciousness their body shape doesn't matter as much I really do believe that so that's why people will be into people that are bigger or smaller because they're into like the person but on an objective scale of like one to ten I would put him like a four or a five maybe or like a maybe a three or four or five not a two though yeah, he's got a really, something about him is really cheery. <laughs> An eight? Ten out of oh, ten. wait, wait, don't skip. We're being judgy here. Maybe a two. <laughs> An eight? Mm. She's very pretty. Her hair's gorge. I like her face. Boobs are great. I think she's very pretty, but on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the hottest of hots, I really feel like you need to be in shape. I'm so sorry. I really feel like you have to work out to be the hots of hots. I do. I think you have to be, I think you have to be in hecka shape. Like you have to have a really nice body and like not too thin, not too skinny. Like you have to have a nice body. So I'm not saying she doesn't, I don't know what her body looks like, but I would say that 
she's probably like a seven or an eight. Seven or an eight, maybe? 10 out of 10. <laughs> okay, obviously not a 10 out of 10, girls. Come on. <laughs> That's, I love the enthusiasm, though. I would place them as fives and sixes. You're either into them or you're not into them. But nothing about them is like off-putting to me. Oh, that's probably my bias. You gotta be confident. <laughs> She's obviously prettier technically. And I think they would agree. But she also holds herself shyer than this one. This one's more confident. So I'm not sure how much that's playing into it. This girl's got a big nose like me. Girl, rip. You know, I feel you. So our big noses just put people off. But she's got a cute, daintier nose. So she's going to be considered more generally attractive than one on the left. But she's very, they're both very pretty. Mm, okay. How do you rate your looks on a scale of 1 to 10? We're continuing. Not being attracted to chubby is learned. No, it's not. There was a time where women considered were women considered thick or curvy or more attractive. Fertility gosses were obese. Everyone always brings this up. That's still cultural. Like that's cultural, right? So we're talking about general populace. You're referencing a cultural change. So yes, culturally, you can make fashion trends say something's more attractive than not, but generally. I'm actually going to make you guys be general here. Generally, in a room, what would a person be sexually attracted to? Truly, most of us seem to pick thinner versus fatter, but not too thin. Too thin, and we don't like that either. We like a medium. You know what I mean? And the chubby thing, they were associated with wealth. They were associated with like you could eat, you could have money. So again, like everything, okay, that's still cultural though. You can be culturally trained to find chubby attractive. You can be culturally trained to find skinny attractive. But generally, if we're in a room, I think like most people would agree, right? Like most people would agree that we tend to, we tend to notice people that are in shape or more attractive or like take care of or groom. We tend to like find people who groom to be more attractive. Is that a learned behavior or is that signaling to our brains so much more than what we can, what we can even like identify? Like we do it reflexively. I don't think it's bad or good. Like I said, I think if you love a consciousness, you're willing to like put up with a lot. But ideally, when we think of an ideal person, when we think of like a very hot person, what are we really imagining, right? a series where we branch out from the usual format and instead ask people for a range of different backgrounds on how they feel about all things related to beauty and aesthetics. So how do you rate your own looks is quite of a bit of an awkward question to answer. So really appreciate everyone who participates in this video. As we were looking back at the clips, we did notice a specific trend in the answers that ties in well with some of the research that we've been exploring lately. Like, Cle yeah, but generally it's modern culture. Cleopatra is ugly as fuck by modern standards. I think, but that's the thing. You're the hottest person in a room full of ugly people. You're still not hot. When I say a scale of one to 10, I'm meaning like we would all agree. Again, it's hard to say because this doesn't exist. There's always somebody hotter. There's always somebody hotter. There's always somebody uglier, period, right? So Cleopatra was the hottest at the time for who she was and her power led her to people thinking she was prettier than she maybe was. And that's the thing. Next to somebody else, Cleopatra is ugly. But next to somebody else, Cleopatra is hot. So when we're talking about a one to one to 10 scale, I'm imagining like next to a very, 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 very attractive person. But then that's always going to change based off of the person's preference. So again, we're only asking ourselves like if we're in a room together and we put away our biases, which is difficult. It's very hard to do. I feel like I practice this constantly because it's, it's – you get mixed information from people. People will – will and especially if you've had plastic surgery. Like if you've had any kind of plastic surgery, I can't judge your looks now because you've changed them to be hotter. So you know what I mean? You mean in relationship to current cultural standards? Like I'm talking about in relationship to, no. Oh, this is interesting. I believe in an objective, hot level. Like I think whether or not we want to admit it or have access to it, there is a person that is like the physical specimen of beauty or or I should say hotness, sexiness, because beauty is subjective. It's in the eye of the beholder, right? Like do you get what I'm saying? Like I think whether we have access to it or not, there is an objective truth to like what is a hot and gorgeous and attractive human. 
I think there is, but it's, but then we always perceive it through our subjective, almost always. So this is why this is so hard to say out loud because we are truly perceiving it through our subjective. That's why guys um, in the menosphere will be like, I have the hottest girl ever, but do you? And how much plastic surgery has she had? And I'm pro plastic surgery. I just think if you get plastic surgery, then you can't be rated on attractive levels. You have to be put in your own category of like people with plastic surgery, how attractive are they? Because most of us are too poor to get plastic surgery and then we have to deal with the consequences of being rated one to 10. Okay. Seven out of 10. Well, I was gonna say six, but I said, let me just- No, 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 again, you're using language differently than me. Yes, but like in chubby culture times, the chubby people might have objectively seen um, as a 10. That's not objective. That's not what objective means. So when I say objective, I mean not subjective. You guys are, that's a subjective example. Oh my God, I'm gonna get heated. Guys, that is a subjective example. I'm saying objective. So that is a subjective example. If you say like, oh, but this was the standard at this time. Yes, subjectively, that was the standard at the time. Objectively, can we even get to that point of knowing the objective? Do we have access to it? Is the question in the challenge I'm going to pose. You know what I mean? Hello? Hype myself up a little bit. Seven or eight. You're being messy with language? I'm being messy? How am I being messy? You, I'm not being messy. Y'all don't know what objective or subjective means. I like the way I look, but sometimes there are days when I don't, so. Maybe like a 7.5. Oh, hold on. I would say 7. 7 out of 10. Maybe. It depends on what her body looks like, right? Okay, so you mean objective across time? What time span then? Yeah, objective period. Objective period. There's no objective period. Objectivity lives outside of culture and time. Thank you, Kay. God, you're always the wisest. I love you. Thank you for being here. Objective mean outside of culture and time. Hello, people. Well, I rate her definitely like a six. She's so pretty to me, but I don't know. Well, I was going to say six, but I said, let me just hype myself up a little bit. Seven or eight. A seven or eight? Girl. No. No. Uh, five or six. I like the way I look, but some But love her hair, very cute, very pretty. But objectively, across standard and like time and space and no. I'm zero days when I don't, so. Ah, Vash, great question. So what would be the source of objective beauty? Like the benchmark regardless of time and period. Like what is an example? Great fucking question. My proposed challenge is that we might not have access to it. And I'm saying the access exists only when we put people up against each other because we don't have enough data. You guys are rating. So, if, okay, Vash, you rated that person a four. Why a four? What are you, what standard are you rating it against, right? I'm trying to guess for the objective, right? I'm trying to guess for the objective. Well, beauty is different than attractiveness. Beauty is a concept of not, beauty is aesthetic, beauty is a feeling, it's not the same thing as being attractive. So beauty and attractiveness are not synonyms. Well, they might be synonyms, but they're different, right? So when I say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I'm talking about the way you feel about a person, they are beautiful to you. When I say a scale of one to 10 in terms of attractiveness, that's different, it's different. You know what I mean? So like my partner and I will speak to each other. Like we think we're like, the, I'm so attracted to him. We're the most beautiful people in the world. I love him so much. And then if it's like gun to your head, what is your attractive level on a one to 10? That's a different answer than do I think you're beautiful? Of course, I, of course he thinks I'm beautiful. Okay, great, baby. You think I'm sexy and you think I'm emotionally a 10. Gun to your head. What do you think I actually am? One to 10, go. That's the kind of conversation I have with my husband, at least. It's like, go, what do you actually think I am? Go. Like, objectively, what do you think I am? That's different answer than, of course, he thinks I'm the most beautiful woman in the world. He married me, which is an emotional argument. You know what I mean? So this is, yes. It, oh, thank you, Topsy. Beauty is beauty um, is a bit, um, but like, okay. So wait, hold on. I'm missing the, okay. Beauty is beauty, but hotness and attractiveness is linked to sex appeal. I, exactly, exactly, okay, yes, um, yes, 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 okay, is the golden mean objective, what do you, oh, the golden standard, no, 
Because the golden standard is subjective, right? Is it not? Am I misunderstanding that question, Maiden? Maybe I misunderstood that. Okay, so wait. I just got back. Are we rating these people beauty or attractiveness? Attractiveness. This is a this is people rating their own attractiveness, scale one to ten. So we're not talking about beauty. We're talking about attractiveness. We're not talking about beauty, which is in the eye of the beholder. We're talking about attractiveness, which I think does have an objective scale, but I'm not convinced we have access to it. So that's why the conversation is like this. Do you know what I mean? I don't think saying there is no objectivity out there is a collective subjective. Mm. Um, I disagree. There, I think there is objective. Well, I believe in subject, objective truth, whether we have access to it or not. You know what I mean? So I believe there is objective attractiveness. I think so. Vash says, wait a minute. You are the one making a proposal. So if you say it is beyond human reach, that doesn't tell me anything. My standard is a whole other question. So what do you rate? How do you rate? Against my perceived my perceived understanding of what could be objective. I've seen a lot of really attractive people in the world. And every time I see one, I go, oh, there's one step closer to objective. One step closer. You know what I mean? That's how I, that, guys, I want to challenge you to challenge yourself to find the objective. Nobody cares about your personal opinion. That's not interesting. Who cares about a personal opinion? I am, well, I care about that too. But I want to know your, uh, what your thought is about the concept of a, objective. What does it mean to have ag- access to objective truth, right? So like, again, this is an opportunity for like, ooh, really challenging the self and thinking, okay, on my scale, I might feel like a 10. But in terms of other people and their physique, their genetics, their like all of those things, are they really a 10? Beauty is different. What you're personally attracted to is different. But then there's like attractiveness. And look, you guys are judgy enough to be rating people already. What are you rating them against? I, for this, am trying to rate them against what I think might be the objective beauty standard outside of space and time. Like objective, whether we agree or not, there is a mystical creature there is a somebody who knows it all and can actually rate it objectively whether you like it or it is a truth I'm looking for the objective truth about attractiveness that is that exists whether we like it or not you know what I mean that's retarded just because you can't engage with it girl doesn't mean it's retarded where's that empathy you always brag about huh (laughs) just because you can't get it this is what I do in my spare time I want to know what is that possible truth we don't have access to? Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Maybe like a 7.5. Why isn't he talking? I would say 7. Probably. But 7 or 8. I like the way I look, but sometimes there are days when I don't, so... Maybe like a 7. Oh, his audio isn't working. I would say 7. Probably say um, 7. Well, it definitely depends on how I'm feeling, but probably like a 7 out of 10. You know, people... They've done studies. People rate themselves a seven because they don't want to be honest with themselves. Seven, if you rate yourself a seven, you're lying to yourself. They've done studies on this where people choose seven because they think it makes them feel pretty, but they're not bragging, but they're not saying they're ugly. And that's why people choose a seven. And I was like, oh, that makes sense that everyone chooses seven because it is, it's a cope, which is very interesting, but you could be a seven. K says objectivity for the universe would probably be more akin to most effective for the more most efficient for the goal. So for humans, it would be the body that is most efficiently built for experience. So a lot of symmetry and perfectly healthy. I would agree. You know, I could understand you doing that, but going over this seems like something we really cannot reach because I don't have any experience of the past. You guys are giving up this. Okay. You're giving up. Like thinking you can't have access to it is why the world gives up on finding objective truth or information. It's like, well, why why look for it if we can't find it? It's like you're giving up, which is fine. But this is my channel and this is what I think is interesting. I want to push myself to try to find something that the whole world wants to give up on finding because it's too hard or can't be accessed. So I'm going to push you a little harder today, guys. I really want I really want to push you today because, again, I know it's difficult No one ever said it would be easy. Wanting it to be easy so it's fun instead of wanting it to be a challenge so it's fun is the difference here. Okay, so this girl here on screen, she says she's a seven. Do we agree? Right? I think you're confusing humility with giving up. Nope, I don't think so. Humility doesn't make any sense when you're, when you're, humility has no place if you're problem solving. Humility has a, when you're problem solving with data, you're right now, we're just throwing things against the wall. We're trying. 
humility is 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 uh, you, you can't be humility would be appropriate if you were actually being humble right but like we're throwing information at the wall right now and if you're like well we can't know then what are you engaging with like what are you engaging with you're not even trying you know what i mean so let's try okay so you don't think she's a seven why not and it's because are we thinking of really, really hot people in our heads? And we're like, mm, she wouldn't match up against them because that's what I'm doing. I'm taking the hottest person I know who's natural, no plastic surgery. And I'm saying mm, up against that person. No. And then I'm saying, OK, who's the most attractive person that I know from what I would assume would be an objective standard, you know, healthy, um, sym symmetrical, all that stuff. And how would I rate them up against that person? Discord says you're using the word objective two different ways. You're saying it's beyond human understanding, but you're also saying it's a collective subjective. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying what we have access to is bubble collective subjectivity. And what I'm saying is, can we try to pop our bubbles to reach what might be closer to the objective? What we do have absolute access to is the subjective collective. And I'm saying, could we challenge ourselves to pop a bubble today to see if we can find the objective? Because every time we collect evidence, we are closer to that. Every time we collect data, we are closer to that. You know what I mean? Never be satisfied with I don't know, I can't know when it comes to introspection. Exactly. But most people are because, again, it's it's very difficult. Um, Discord says, of course, I can see the different ways people see attractiveness. I just don't believe there's such a thing as objective attractiveness. Interesting. So then we're having a disagreement about reality. I do think there is an objective, whether we like it or not. But your belief system is that there isn't one. And the data and the evidence shall prove us right or wrong. Exciting. OK, let's keep going. Ten. I think I write myself a seven. So it seems. Ah, uh, Conrad. Nope. I'm in a challenging mood today. I would just accept that this is a blind spot for Brit instead of getting triggered. So the person with the blind spot today is the person who wants to try harder. The person with the blind spot is the person who wants to problem solve more. The person with the blind spot is the person who wants to collect data and check it against the evidence we know. Is that the argument you're making? Because I'm feeling spicy today. I'm feeling like I want to challenge people today. You're saying the person with the blind spot is the person who says, we don't know and we need to work to know more. I'm saying we don't know, so should we should work harder to know. And you're saying we don't know, so should we should give up on trying. Is that the argument? Is there anyone who would find rotting teeth and cystic acne beautiful? Great question. How does makeup play into objective looks? A lot. I think to truly rate a person's attractiveness, you would have to see them with no makeup on, no plastic surgery. But also, we can allow for makeup. We can kind of like eh, guess even with makeup, are they? Because I think a super, 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 a true 10 on objective scale would look gorgeous with or without makeup unless the makeup was really, really bad. And then uh, a person who's less attractive naturally could look better with makeup or worse if it's done really, really bad. Yeah. Seems that a lot of people rated themselves a 7 out of 10. And this is in line with what we Ah, see? See, they predicted the behavior because humans are predictable. Doesn't mean they have access to truth. Look at... I love this. Probably like a 7 out of 10. I think I rate myself a 7. So it seems that a lot of people rated themselves a 7 out of 10. And this is in line with what we predicted after researching the topic in more detail. Just taking one study as an example, Cooper et al. asked unmarried university students to rate their own attractiveness and found most men and women also rated themselves a 7 out of 10. What did I tell you? What did I? Here's the data. You wanted the data? Here's the data to challenge your bias. 10. When asked about the lowest possible attractiveness level that they would consider for a potential romantic partner, again, most said a 7 out of 10. Are you listening to this? I love it. I'd probably rate myself about a seven and a half, eight, maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I think that I try to make. Oh my God, Conrad, can you not see that we're having a completely different conversation? I love you so much. You're saying, no, I'm saying the fact that you ignore fertility goddesses being hot or Cleo being hot is just random outliers. When they prove the objective beauty is actually irrelevant because of culture, you're not paying attention to what I'm saying. You just made my point of making it clear we're not talking about the same thing. We're not talking about the same thing. Do you think there's an objective strongest person in the world? 
do you think we could objectively, do you think there is information, there is an answer to who's objectively the strongest person in the world? Yes or no? Yes, obviously I'll answer for you. Of course, there's objectively the truth to who is the strongest person in the world on every given second of the, like, right? I think the same exists with attractiveness. I think there is an objective truth of who is the most attractive living person ever, that could be detected, whether it's every second because people die every day or whatever else, right? But there is a scale and it's not cultural. It's based off of more than that. Cultural is subjective, so it's a mixture of the two, but it's mostly, I think, evolutionary or biology most likely, right? We're all triggered in chat. I love it. Let's go. Bring those chats in. YouTube loves a chatty, chatty audience. So again, we are not talking about the same thing. You are not understanding me, right? We're not having the same conversation, but you think we are. Cleopatra and cultural differences of subjective beauty is exactly the proof of what? Subjective beauty has nothing to do with the conversation of objective beauty. Make myself look nice and I make an effort. Probably that cuff. No, attract, okay. See, but attractiveness changes, at least in some aspects across time, only for the group you're identifying, but not for the answer. So it's for the group you're identifying that it could change over time, but only because there's no one alive to represent the truth outside of that representation. You know, when you study Christianity, somebody said in yesterday's live chat that Jesus is always built like very handsome and gorgeous. It's because they believe Jesus was the perfect man. They believe Jesus, well, Adam was the perfect man, but Jesus was the perfect, he was a beautiful man. Some people depict Jesus as very sexy because some people think he was a beautiful man, like a perfect man, an attractive man, right? But of course, that's like the lore because everybody wants the hot people on their team. That's why everyone thinks they're hot. The reason we all think we're hot is because we want the hottest person on our team because we know there's like an objective, we know like hotness makes you, it gives you perks in society, right? So it's interesting. So again, beauty is different than attractiveness. And those words mean different things to different people. We're, again, like, um, is Bella Hadid the most beautiful woman? Absolutely not. And she's had plastic surgery. So it doesn't count. But no, absolutely not. Bella Hadid is not the most, like, attractive person in the world, right? Hello? 5.56, maybe? I don't know. I don't think I come under, like, beauty of standards, like high beauty of standards for sure. But I think I don't find myself too bad. And that's- She's so I cute. Think. She's so cute. I think that is exactly why. I do not want to give myself a five. I want to definitely be a seven, I guess. You want to be a seven though, come on. If we want to be a seven, what is that? What do we think that means? Search found similar results and went a step further by looking at how people rate their own appearance compared to the perceptions <laughs> of others. I think uh, I get enough attention, but I know I can still improve, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But a four gets enough attention in a dungeon full of twos. So it doesn't mean anything. Get the amount of attention you get only tells you if you're hot in that room full of people. It does not tell you how you rate against the, like, populace or, like, objective standard, whatever that could mean. <laughs> uh, I think I have a nice smile. And I think my hair and eyes... Go together like my freckles. I think it's a bit something a bit different about me. I think I'm not conventionally beautiful. I know sometimes when I look at myself, there are certain features, but I don't think others would see me like maybe I would see myself as eight on certain days, but I know others wouldn't. So a solid six. Ananya brings up a great point on this, where how we perceive ourselves isn't necessarily how others view us. Mm -hmm. And we can see this play out in a greater range in Tobias Greitmeier's 2020 study, where most people rated their own looks higher with a 6.03 out of 9 on average, or a 6.7 out of 10 relative to the perception of others being rated as 5.44 out of 9 on average, or roughly a 6 out of 10. So almost a full point difference. This gap in perception was most pronounced for the least attractive people in the sample, while the most attractive participants actually underrated their looks compared to outsiders' perceptions. This gap is a pretty consistent finding in the late 2020 study, where most people rated their own looks higher, with a 6.03 out of 9 on average, or a 6.7 out of 10 relative to the perception of others being rated as 5.44. I keep missing it. I'm sorry. I keep reading chat. 
<clears throat> wouldn't. So a solid six. Ananya brings up a great point on this, where how we perceive ourselves isn't necessarily how others view us. And we can see this play out in a greater range in Tobias Greitmeier's 2020 study, where most people rated their own looks higher with a 6.03 out of 9 on average or a 6.7 out of 10 relative to the perception of others being rated as 5.44 out of 9 on average or... See that? We rate ourselves higher than most people would rate us. Or roughly a 6 out of 10. So almost a full point difference. <clears throat> this gap in perception was most pronounced for the least attractive people in the sample, while the most attractive participants actually underrated their looks compared to outsiders' perceptions. Interesting. So the hotter people rated themselves lower, then the less hot people rated themselves higher. Is a pretty consistent. I'm telling you, ego plays into it. That's what I'm saying. I want to know what the answer is outside the ego. I want to know what the answer is outside of the ego. If all the data shows us, if there's like data to prove we have our biases and they come up, that I'm curious what the what it would the answer be outside of our own bias. Like, do you ever just look at yourself and you're like, I wish I knew what I look like? Do you ever see somebody and you're like, oh, I identify them as this group with this vibe, with this thing? Don't you ever just wish you could look at yourself and be like, what am I clearly? Like, if I could see myself as a stranger, how attractive would I find myself? How would I really rate myself? And that's what I'm saying. When you look at people and you're like, ew, they're ugly, and then you rate yourself attractive, what are you doing it? What is it doing? And I think that's interesting, right? Kay says, evolution is the process of the universe coming into alignment with objectivity, whether we will ever hit it or just infinitely keep evolving is a different thing. Amen. I think, honestly, can't be real with you guys. I think like... I feel like Kay really sees me right now. I feel like Kay understands my relationship with the objective. I think Kay, correct me if I'm wrong, but we had the Discord talk, right? In the VC about this. And like, I think it was you and me, or was it somebody else? And we were like trying to explain the objective. And like, it's hard for people to understand it because like we are only perceiving reality through the ego. And I'm saying, what if I could perceive myself outside the ego or what if I could perceive the world outside of my ego and I think that's something that I'll be spending my life trying to figure out and that's that is what's interesting to me so okay interesting finding in the literature and Matthew Atal's study provides evidence for some self-awareness about this effect men in particular accurately predicted other people would rate them as less attractive but persisted in rating themselves higher in spite of that awareness Ooh, uh, I'd say a nine um, like I said before I think girl a nine, a nine, a nine, a nine, a nine, a nine, nine. Beautiful. For me, sometimes I like the tip of my nose, sometimes I don't. I think I don't really have the standard kind of features, but I'm proper. Discord said everything is as objective as we can subjectively define it. I disagree and I agree. I agree through the ego and our understanding, yes. But I think outside of that, there is an objective. And again, whether or not we'll have access to it, I do think it exists. And I think it matters if you're like me. To me, it matters. To other people, it's not going to matter. For practical reasons, nobody will ever have to care about this. But this will be what will keep me curious for the rest of my life. When I say I am never bored, it is because I am interested in the objective that is so beyond what most people want to spend their time doing. <gasps> Maybe you're learning more about me today, but that is literally what I think is the most interesting thing about being alive is like, I do believe in there is an objective truth, whether or not we have access to it. That's what we're gonna do. Portions of my face, but I think somehow they work together. Certain things I like about myself, certain things, you know, maybe I would change. I don't know. There's nothing really to say, but I mean, some, I would get, I'd say five, pretty level number. So why do we tend to... Oh, uh, excuse me, ma'am. This sounds like woo-woo belief in God. There's no objectivity on perceptual topics outside of the intersubjectiveness. You don't know that. Why do you know that? Do you believe that or do you know that? Do you think you have access to all knowledge to know that? Or do you actually just believe that? Because I know I don't have access to all knowledge to know that. So I believe, okay, there is an objective and I will spend my life trying to figure that out, but I have no reason to think there wouldn't be. When I know for a fact, like things happen, like I know what it happens in real life, in a, on the mag micro. I know we have objective experiences on the micro. Ah, uh, you know what I mean? I know there's an objective experience on the micro, so there must be one on the macro. And if there is one on the macro, what would it look like? 
It would look like information just being what it is, regardless of your ego's intent to bring subjectivity to the answer, right? That's what I think it is. Overrate our attractiveness compared to others. Well, let's look at three possible reasons. The first is, let's Oh, that was not in relation to what I said, sorry. Are you sure about that? Because it sounded like it was, but I'll take it. About the mere exposure effect. This is our tendency to like things, in this case faces, more the more we are exposed to them. <coughs> we look at ourselves several times each day in the mirror, so it makes sense that we would rate our own appearance higher than strangers would. Consistent with this theory, Jeffrey yeah. Haddock's research showed young people who- That's a filter girl. Strongly value attractiveness rate themselves better looking now compared to the past, suggesting we like our own appearances more over time and the more we are exposed to it as a generation. Ah, which brings it back to what the chat said earlier. And this applies not just to how we view ourselves, but also to how we rate other people's physical attractiveness on the one to 10 scale. Anatol used brain scans to examine the impact of repeated exposure on perceived attractiveness and repeated exposure to the same attractive or average looking face activated specific regions in the brain and led to increased attractiveness ratings. So we rate complete strangers as less attractive compared to people we're more familiar with, including ourselves. This is important to keep in mind when we look at these studies on attractiveness ratings, where most ratings in this case are given by strangers to other strangers. Mm -hmm. Thinking about this more broadly, this lack of familiarity is one of the biggest issues with dating apps. People swipe left on strangers who could potentially- Okay. Only be a good match. My head's been made dinner. If they just got to know each other first. Uh. Shoot, I have to go grab it because it still has like 10 minutes. Okay, we're gonna take a pause. I'm excited to see like all the heated comments when I get back, guys. I'll be right back. I think I'm not too bad and then I'm not too great. So I think eight is a perfect number for me. I think I'm at eight. Oh, I think eight is so attractive. Am I crazy? I'm gonna argue. I love arguing with you guys. It's so fun. But literally, like eight is so hot to me like eight is like very attractive just uh i think i'm not too bad and then i'm not too great so i think eight is a perfect number for me i think i'm at eight probably a solid 8.5 whoa do you see what i'm saying so the fact that we know that's no way they're that rating we know that we are getting closer to what could be objective. Why do we think that? Is it our biases? Is it our prejudice? Maybe. Is it something inside of us that goes, no. If 10 is the hottest, this cannot be a person who's 1.5 clicks away from the hottest. This cannot be possibly a person who's very close to the hottest. That it wouldn't, math wouldn't work that way. Okay? I think I'm an eight. This guy thinks he's an eight. Like again, if we know in our, like, what is that in our bodies that go, okay, obviously you're not an Probably 8. Probably a solid 8.5. An 8.5. She thinks she is 1.5 points away from being considered the most attractive of human species. The most attractive human specimen. Why do we think she's right or wrong? And, yeah, I don't want to sort of do too much for like a, um, well, I don't know. I, I'm a bit sort of probably self-cynical and I don't want to big my, myself up too much, but... Yeah, probably a good thing to big one's up, oneself up about, so yeah. Evolutionary biologist Robert Trivers proposed that self-deception could be an evolutionary adaptation. Self-deception, disgrace. That improves our chances of passing on our genes. We found some... Brittany, where do you get your rate? <clears throat> where do you get rated? Like, where do you collect your data? I agree that you rate more objectively than many people, even though it probably won't ever be achievably achievable completely um the data is again you're collecting we're still collecting the data what do you mean like it's all around you read the studies i've read all these studies i already know them so every study he keeps mentioning i've already read this stuff i know it i've already read the articles i know it and then on top of that anecdotal experience anecdotal experience like put together both and start asking yourself this is all i do all day you guys want to know how i work all day all day i just look at people and go how would i objectively see them outside of my bias. How do I objectively see myself outside of my bias? What about this person? And I just flip through pages on the internet or of a magazine and I go, how do I look at this person? And then my family will be like, what do you think about this person? And my mom, my whole life, we all grew up like going, what do you think this person is attractive level? All of us as siblings, we go, what do you think? And we're very honest with each other. We're very, we try very hard to get close to the truth without our bias, even though we know what our biases are and we say that. So again, the data is from like, 
obviously anecdotal because like I don't have access to 8 billion people. Hello. You know what I mean? And then the studies that have been done, right? Yeah. Support for this theory in Lynn et al's 2014 research, which showed that romantic self-deception, or rating yourself higher in attractiveness and desirability than others do, predicts romantic success for women. This is comparable to the winner effect in the animal kingdom, where Ooh. we observe- And by the way, they've even done studies on this, where you need to- you need to literally say you are higher than you would rate yourself in order to signal to your partner that you think you're worthy of them having a baby with you. So actually, okay, no, 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 no. You've read the study. Sorry, I haven't read the um, most academics are behind a paywall. No, 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 no. I meant I've read the articles about the studies. My bad. I've read the articles about the studies, just to be very, very clear. I haven't read the literal studies. I've read the articles about the studies. So every article he's bringing up, like I, like I understand that reference. That's what I mean to say. I did not read the literal studies. That would be the next part of Brittany's life, learning to read studies. That's the next part of my life. Okay, so, um, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Everybody on the same page? What was I going to say? Holy crap. Oh, wait. Oh, fuck, I forgot. There was something else I had read. Man, I lost my train of thought. Of greater success in subsequent fights due to a boost of oh. confidence after... People will rate themselves higher to also reference to their partners that they're worth procreating with. So if you talk bad about yourself too much, people will internalize that thought and start to think, maybe I did choose an ugly partner. Maybe I shouldn't be with them. Maybe I don't because you kind of do want, you know, they always say like you want a partner that's kind of hot to bring up the elevation of the status. So again, it's really, really interesting. And so for me, when I think about it, I'm like, oh, like, well, you have to, that's maybe more psychology, but you want to be thoughtful. You know what I mean? You want to be thoughtful about how you're rate, like you're talking about yourself because the people around you might start thinking that of you as well, even if it's not true, even if it's not true. And it's very interesting. To winning an initial fight. If positive self-beliefs increases the chance of success, it would make sense that we would inflate our own level of attractiveness to likewise also increase that chance. I would say 10. I'm quite confident with myself. I love my... What did you uh, think? I would say... ...own level of attractiveness to likewise also increase that chance. I would say 10. Uh... Obviously a 10. Girl, you're beautiful. But like, again, am I the only one who's masochistic enough to want to know like how attractive I am compared to other people? Like, I just want to know. And not compared to other people, but compared to like reality. I'm like so obsessed to know. You know what I mean? I want to know reality. I don't care about other people. It's not about being validated. It's about knowing myself. And how will I know myself if I lie to myself and think I'm a 10? How will I know myself if I lie to myself and I tell myself I'm a 10? When I'm worried about the objective. Subjectively, of course I feel gorgeous, guys. Come on. That's not, I obviously feel good about myself. I've been working out. I've been pumping iron. I've been fucking lifting weights. Okay. Of course I feel good about my butt. Have you seen it? It's gorgeous. Okay. That has nothing to do with like this, this thinking I'm a 10. Like I want to know, I want to know knowledge, you know, girl, study psychology, all of this info theories, um, academia will get you access. You'll gain so much. I know, honestly, I think about going to school all the time just to learn, but like, I don't have the time. I work seven days a week. Like how would I get the mo like money, time, effort? Ugh, I'm not, mul I, my, ugh, sounds like a lot of work. But I think about it because when I did go to college for a short time, I went for child psychology and I loved it. But again, I hated the school setting. I hated teachers. I hated homework. I just want to learn. That's why I just read books because I just want to learn, you know? I'm quite confident with myself. I love my um, body, my features, my height. Oh my everything God. About me. I'm so sorry. Yes. Smatics. Honestly, people get more and more less attractive the more I analyze them. Attractive people get more flaws found while less attractive people get more pleasant balances and elements found. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? I had a friend who was like, I'm definitely dating a 10. I was like, you're definitely dating a 10. But then I looked at them for a really long time and I was like, mm. because if you look at someone long enough, like if you look at someone long enough, you're like, because mm. there's always somebody more attractive. Again, there's always somebody more attractive. But in a group of like, generally, I think most people are probably like, most people you will have access to are going to be like, maybe eights and nines and then you'll see tens but are they really tens and it's like well we'd have to see everybody we'd have to see eight billion people 
to kind of know and then rate that against what we think is objective. Because again, when I say we have to see all those people, I mean, we just don't have the data to even have this first step into objective. We just have, well, we have enough data to get to the first step, but not enough data to get to the actual end. And by the way, when I went to go get food just now, my partner quickly rated, we rated each other very quickly. And I was like, agree. And then we shook hands and well, not literally, but I left with my food because again, we're interested in like, well, if this bubble would rate us this, this bubble would rate us this, this bubble would rate us this. And then what we think is objectively, we'd probably be rated this because we know the bubbles are going to rate us differently. And we know we're going to rate ourselves differently. But would the universe rate you? What would the universe say you are as a human specimen, as a human specimen in terms of attractiveness? If nature is about attractive and attracting a mate, if even in birds, there's more attractive birds, right? What is that attractive? What does that relationship with attractiveness mean? Me, so I have no problem. I think life is too short, so 10. <laughs> Thirdly, although researchers have shown that people broadly agree on who is attractive and who is not, it's possible that we focus on different traits to evaluate our own attractiveness compared mm -hmm. to how others judge mm -hmm. us. For example, a 2015 study found that women's self perceived facial attractiveness was predicted by BMI and fluctuating asymmetry while men's ratings for women were influenced by more neoteny and facial averageness. So both men and women were looking at different parts of the face, but nonetheless, all of these things do contribute to a more attractive face. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I just feel like, with me, it's like, I don't feel I'm the greatest looking guy in the world. I don't feel like I'm not the greatest looking guy. I'm just like average. I feel like he could go up a few steps though. I feel like he could definitely be, if he worked out, different posture, his hair was done and his beard was done. I think he'd go up like three points, maybe two points, three points. He's looking all like, I don't really have that kind of thing to really make people. Cause as a specimen, like as a human specimen, he's not, he's not the height of health and he doesn't have the genetic lottery. So it's like both the genetic lottery and the height of health. People think I'm good looking. Mm, six. I feel like I'm pretty but i'm not like super beautiful but so pretty holy crap see she's beautiful to me so my bias would say she is like an eight like she's gorgeous to me like she is beautiful to me like this human is gorgeous to me so i would say she's an eight like i just think she's so beautiful so i would rate her at least an eight she's the first person i saw that i was like that's like an eight to me like she feels like an eight like yeah a 9.5, pushing a 10. Oh, why is some of the audio not working? I'm so sad for them. Me. Whoever edited face, this video, they might want to look at it again. Elysia talks about not really caring about what people think about her. So how important are other people's opinions on when it comes to our looks? Generally depends a lot on who they are. Mm -hmm. Miller and colleagues showed university students were more likely to rate feedback as threatening and avoid feedback on... Uh Oh, feedback is threatening. Their appearance when the ratings came from close peers compared to low threat evaluators, such as students at another university, older adults or children, compared to their own peers, which are people you're going to see face to face some sooner or later. I don't think I'm ugly. I'm not the most attractive person in the world, but yeah. Me personally, I don't give anyone 10 because 10 means perfect, but I, I'd give myself a good 8.5 or a 9. Mm. <clears throat> he's not symmetrical to be an eight or a nine but he's attractive but something about him is too unique when there's a uniqueness factor mm, you know Brit rate us objectively we can make a threat or something no I'm not Onision I'm not gonna rate my audience no mm-mm I'm not rating my audience and I'm not rating my callers. Do not book a call with me so I will rate you. I'm not going to do it. I am not going to rate anybody's looks or attractive levels. I'm not doing it. But thank you for trusting me. That's so sweet. <laughs> you know, everyone has their own opinion, but that's just how I look at myself. So he's, he's I feel like I have like pretty nice, distinct features that, you know, would make. Pretty nice, distinct features. I'm not sure distinct is the same as being so like attractive people notice you do you know what i'm saying do you get what i'm there is a difference here okay i feel like there's there's a difference right 
There's a difference between walking down the street and people notice you because you're so attractive and walking down the street and people notice you because you have unique features. I think that's very different. But I agree because like a lot of supermodels will actually have like really distinct features and they'll actually be kind of ugly, but kind of hot. Like a lot of supermodels are ugly hot. Uh, let me rephrase. A lot of runway models are ugly hot. But a lot of super supermodels like Naomi Campbell, she's just hot. Okay. Me stand up, so I don't think they mesh together well. So, um, I think it depends. Like, some days uh, I feel really confident, I feel like a 10, but then some days, like, I'm not really feeling yeah. it. So, it's like six, seven. One issue with asking people to rate themselves from one to ten is that their answers are likely somewhat context dependent. I know your those opinion TikToks. of your own attraction. The TikToks that are like, My boyfriend's dating two girls, and it shows her like in her normal clothes, and then it shows her made up. I actually like those before and afters. Attractiveness could be influenced by something as simple as scrolling TikTok or not for that particular day and exposure to so many attractive people all at once could influence how you feel about your own physical looks. We can see some evidence for this. Mm. Okay. So I'll meet people that I'm like, oh my God, your partner is like super, super hot. Like definitely a 10. But then I'll show that same picture of that same person to somebody else and they're like, uh, a seven. And I'm like, oh. And I think when, when I think of objective, I think no matter, I'm going to go further. I would say taking your ego out of it, no matter who you are, you would agree that person is very attractive. Like, do you get what I'm saying? I'm saying there, I believe, I believe it's a belief that there is a, there is a type of attractive that is the height of attractiveness in the world that no matter who looks at them, regardless of your bias, you could be like, oh, they're attractive, regardless of your bias, Right. If a person is attractive or not attractive based off bias, how attractive are they is the question. And can a person who's so in their bias even tell the difference? Because they would have to take themselves outside of it. And so that's the question. And then I think no matter how we want to phrase it, there is a type of ugly in the world that we could say is objectively the least amount of attractive. But at the same time, still people could still find it attractive because it's subjective, right? And again, when you love somebody, it doesn't matter what they look like. I truly believe that. I think like if my partner was ever mangled in a fire and had no face, I would still love him. And I would still be in love with him and find him beautiful. I don't know if I would find him attractive, but I don't really think that matters because at that point I'm already in love. So I don't know if I need to find my partner attractive after I'm in love, but I think I would because I'm in love. I would find them beautiful. The beauty would trump the attractiveness. Ooh, maybe there's something to that, but I think I'm... No, because I think I am attractive, but attraction is so, su it's like superficial. It's just the imagery. Mm, I don't know, because my partner and I talk about this a lot. Like, we know we're in love with each other. We don't care what they look like. We don't care if we lose all our limbs. We don't care if we get cancer. We don't care about anything. Like, I don't care if I have a scar in my face. Like, what is he going to do, leave me? Girl, I'm his literal soulmate. He's not going to leave me because I got amputated, okay? <laughs> People who leave their partners because they get sick, they're obviously not your soulmate. <laughs> In the literature where Little at all showed that exposure to attractive same-sex images lowered people's self-rated attractiveness, while exposure to unattractive images had the opposite effect. This exposure effect can be even more Wait. pronounced for attractive. While your opinion of your own attractiveness could be influenced by something as simple as scrolling TikTok or not for that particular day, and exposure to so many attractive people all at once could influence how you feel about your own physical mm -hmm. looks. We can see some evidence for this in the literature where Little at all showed that exposure to attractive same-sex images lowered people's self-rated attractiveness, while exposure to unattractive images had the opposite effect. This exposure effect can be even more pronounced for attractive people where a 2022 study found highly attractive people lowered their own self-rated attractiveness after looking at other attractive faces wearing makeup compared to no makeup, mm -hmm. while these same images had no effect on less attractive participants. Ten, man. Because I just, luckily... Um, not even on a sort of pretentious level, um, but I've always been comfortable in my own skin. I've always liked what I've seen in the mirror. See? See how they're rating themselves? How I feel, how I feel, how I feel, how I feel, how I feel. Nobody asked you. Well, it is how you feel. But rating your own attractiveness. See, if somebody asked me that, I wouldn't rate it on how I feel. I would try to get to the most objective idea of like what I would be in like a specimen way, like in a human species way. I wouldn't talk about how I feel. If they asked me how beautiful do I feel, I'd be like, oh, I feel beautiful. But if they said like how attractive do you think you are on a scale of 1 to 10, 
what does my feelings have to do with it? You know what I mean? I've um, never had any sort of insecurities when it comes to my face or body or, or height or anything. Um, I've been blessed in a sense. So yeah. Probably say um, seven, when I'm ready to be, I can be an eight. Um, but yeah, definitely a seven. <coughs> just, yeah, just confident in myself. Um, yeah, just confidence, I suppose. Ten. <laughs> Even if you don't, even if you don't, you don't think it deep down, you have to say it because you can't project off yeah. bad energy about yourself. Okay, see, you can project bad, project bad energy about yourself. This is true in psychology. So, from a psychological perspective, it's good to think highly of yourself, but not too highly. You don't want to be a narcissist here, okay? So it's interesting. So, so it's always have to be a yeah. ten. You even on my worst day, I'm a ten. Period. <laughs> <laughs> you have to think that a manifest it for real. Yeah. See, isn't this boring? Isn't it boring to talk about the subjective when we could challenge ourselves for the objective? Wouldn't it be more interesting if these women actually gave it a thought and thought, okay, what would I really be? But they can't. They can't do it because they need to think they're a 10 because, like they said, they got to think it even if it's not true. And I'm saying, but what is true? So there is a true. Even if it's not true, then there is a true. What is the true? And I want to know that. Yeah, if you don't think you're a 10, then who's you, going who's gonna to think that? Yeah. Exactly. So, a, 10. a lot of our interviewees mentioned the importance of being Yes, Selena, I want the quiet confidence. Same. I will accept gay ego, but I actually do, don't want a partner who's like, I'm a 10. I'm a 10. I'd be like, shut the fuck up, you delusional bitch. Like, it would be delusion. I hate it. I think it's so unattractive. So I personally think it's very unattractive when people rate themselves higher than they are. If I'm going to be honest with you, I am more attracted to people who are very realistic about how they look. So people that rate themselves like very high, I'm like, I want to tear you down. You know, I want to I want to tear you down. I want to do it. You're making me want to do it so badly now. And it's not that I want to do it, but now I want to do it. I wasn't going to do it before. Before I was like, you're a queen slay. But now... Now I want to, you know what I mean? There's something about like, it's, un I just, I, maybe it's me. I just want to know what's the most, you know what I'm saying? I just like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> being confident in your own looks. And there's a good reason for this. Both men and women rate confidence as an important trait in a potential partner. But is there an optimal level of confidence for maximizing attractiveness? Mm -hmm. Murphy et al. ran four different experiments to find out, and their initial results show that overconfident people were accurately perceived as more confident, which did increase desirability. However, they were also perceived as arrogant, which negatively impacted desirability, more or less canceling out the effect. But there are some real benefits to overconfidence. Ooh. Being overconfident was a net plus canceling out the effect. That's that girl on TikTok. Have you seen her? She's very beautiful. She's so pretty. Like, sometimes I'm like, holy crap, I want to die. Like, she's so beautiful. And she's so pretty that a part of me, like, almost thinks she might be an a-hole. I don't think so, though. I think I get good vibes from her. I usually like her content. I don't know her name. But I like her. And I really hope she's not an a-hole. I'm like, because she's just like, but she's obviously very pretty. If that's her naturally. If she's had no plastic surgery, I'm going to say, like, she's a nine. She's a nine. I'm going to say she's a nine. But there are some... Do you know who that is? Do you guys know who this is? More confident, which did increase desirability. However... This lady here, I would say she's a nine. They were also perceived... Uh, 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 I assume she's a nine. There are things about her I could have to, like, pay attention to, but I think maybe i don't know i could be wrong is arrogant which negatively impacted desirability more or less cancelling out the effect but there are some real benefits <laughs> to overconfidence being overconfident was a net plus when it came to intrasexual competition and the authors asked participants to write their own dating profile then they were given the chance to bet money on if their dating profile was more attractive than another profile and the results show that people were less willing to compete against overconfident opponents while the overconfident ones were more likely to agree to compete across the board. In a follow-up experiment, the authors found that- Aw, uh, she's had work. Is her name Haley, Haley Bailey? She's a creator? Yeah, I see her on TikTok. If she's had work, then it doesn't count. I'm so sorry, fuck. If she's had work, then I can't rate her. Because again, like, I really think you have to- You have to be 
Untouched. <clears throat> Are you sure that's her name? It's not coming up. Oh, there it is. Okay. Six million. Six million. Okay. You guys see her? Yeah. Okay, here's her. I squeeze you in at 7.30. Without makeup, right? Uh, November 16, or light makeup, maybe? <laughs> but that's in 15 years. But I don't feel like Italian that day. Like it's... But yeah, if she's had things done, then it doesn't count. You know? But what has she gotten done? That's a great question. If she has gotten anything done. Ooh, does Botox count? That's a great question. Does Botox count as getting something done? I want to say... I want to... Mm, she did plastic surgery videos. Oh, okay. Am I good at screaming? Um, I think I am good at screaming. Her lips maybe look done? See, like, I think her face is so attractive. Like, the way it looks, her nose is gray, her eyes are nice. Like, everything about her face is, like, really complimentary. But I don't know how much of it is makeup and tricks and all of that stuff. So if she's had, like, a lot of plastic surgery or Botox, then I feel like she's disqualified. Because now it's like, okay, what do I do with that? You know what I mean? Then it's, then she's disqualified, you know? But if that was her naturally, if that was her naturally, that would be really interesting. To me, I'm assuming, like... I don't know if it's my bias that she would be so highly rated. It could be because you guys are rating her much lower. So I don't know. I don't know. But if I had to put her up against people, maybe she'd be less. Maybe someone stronger would be. You know what I mean? If I notice it when you walk into the room, it counts. Okay, then I agree with that. I agree with that. That as levels of competition increased, the negative effects of arrogance on overall romantic success seem to disappear. See, if you don't find her pretty, that's your bias. Because you couldn't say she's ugly and you couldn't say she's average. Right? Like, that's the problem I'm finding. Are you guys rating her on your bias? Because, guys, put her up against the average. You would have to admit she's at least beautiful or pretty or attractive. Like, she's obviously higher attractive than the average person, right? Like, if you looked at her, you might not find her attractive. I agree. But if you put her on an attractive scale, like, you couldn't say she's ugly. You couldn't say she's average. You couldn't even say she's a little bit above average. You know what I mean? Like, she's pretty attractive. You know what I mean? I think she's more above average. You take into consider her body. You take into consider her aesthetic. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I think like taking those things into consideration, she's not too skinny. She's not too chubby. She's like right there. She's very in the middle, but I don't know because she's had plastic surgery. Mm. You know, I, now I can't, now I can't know. I can't know in, in that way. And she did got a boob job. I love that for her, but yeah, then I can't, I can't really rate her then if she's gotten that much work done. Peer. While the positive effects of confidence became stronger. Mm -hmm. So the main takeaway here is that overconfident people seem to have a significant romantic competitive advantage. Therefore, it makes sense that we tend to overrate our own looks compared to others' perceptions. Uh, 10. Because <laughs> it's me. It's for myself, you know. I should see myself as a 10 out of 10. Why would you need to see... Y'all love to lie to yourselves. Humans love to lie to themselves. Oh, five. Um, you know, it's a, a good solid pass mark rate. Nothing too fancy. Because I think I'm cute. You no, know, it's a, a good... I should see myself as a 10 out of 10. Oh, five. Um... Four, his proportions are funny, and though he's, like, not ugly, I could take him in a fight. So he's not the height of, this, like, a specimen as a human, and that he's nothing about him is very symmetrical, and nothing about him is, like, sticking out as very attractive, but nothing's very ugly either. He's just, like, a copy and paste of a person. Like a generic, he looks like a stick figure. No, it's a, a he's good, very lovely. I hope he's happy. Good solid pass mark rate. Nothing too fancy. Because I think I'm cute, um... But, yeah, I put in a lot of effort. To okay, she's cute. So unsymmetrical. Jesus. 
Beautiful. I love it. Me too. Me too. I'm very unsymmetrical. She's super unsymmetrical though, like in everything. It's kind of amazing. She does put in an effort. Um, I'd still say average. Uh, feel and look nice and be nice. I think my personality also shines through. Corin mentioned her personality and how it impacts the way she rates herself. Now you might think personality is irrelevant when it comes to the 1 to 10 scale, particularly on looks, but we came across some significant studies showing that personality genuinely does influence our perceptions of physical attractiveness. Let's look at one of those studies where Kong et al divided 120 people into three groups and asked them to rate 60 women's attractiveness. Two weeks later, they rated the same faces again, this time with positive, negative, or no personality information. There was a significant boost in rated attractiveness for those with a positive personality and a decrease in rating for those with a negative personality trait ascribed to them. And that's where subjectivity comes in. That's where bias comes in. That's how we, when we want to be, like, we feel this way about people. Like, I feel this way. You make me feel this way, so I'm going to rate you lower. It's true. You know, if you get, um, if you get not enough sleep over a long period of time, we'll start to see people as like uglier or meaner, more like dangerous than they even are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is why I'm always like very cynical of police reports. Because how do I know your bias from lack of sleep isn't making you arrest people you shouldn't be arresting? And another 2023 study added to this body of research showing that perceived honesty boosts physical attractiveness ratings for both men and women. The impact of personality on perceived physical attractiveness and also the mere exposure effect helps to explain why so many couples start out as friends. Hunter Tull showed that couples who had been friends before dating had much lower attractiveness correlations a range of 0 0.20 and 0 0.40 compared to those who had formed relationships soon after meeting. Attractiveness correlations of 0.52 and 0 0.70. I wonder if that has to do with like when you get to know your friends, you get to know all their flaws and then you find icks about them you don't like. But when you don't get to know people and then you date them, you're going to rate them higher on attractive level because you don't know all their icks yet. Because so many people who are dating in long-term relationships find so many icks over time that their partners become ugly to them. I remember in my last few relationships, moments when all my partners would look ugly to me. And I'm like, oh my God, why do I think my partner is ugly? Because I never think my partner is ugly. When I'm in love, I never think my partner is ugly. And in a romantic way, like in a romantic way. But when you like, you're having an ick about a person, all of a sudden you can like, it's like, it like pops the bubble. It like makes you go like, what? And I'm not even saying they're ugly, but emotionally, you know what I mean? I also recommend dating your friends. I feel like that's really nice. Also, excuse me. Oh, my gosh. We need a segment of Britney's roast. Guys, please. I don't want to be mean to anybody personally. I feel like I don't know these people. So, like, you know what I mean? And everyone's really pretty and beautiful. I love everybody. Everyone's, like, a gift from God. You're all, like, God's little angels. But, like, okay. It's just, like, when I ask my siblings or ask my family, like, hey, how attractive am I? Of course, your mother and father are, like, you're the most beautiful girl, Bathy. God bless you with so much beauty. And I'm, like, your opinion is useless. You, go. And they're like, uh, honestly, bro, I feel like you're a little fat right now and it's making you look a little pudgy and like slothish. And I'm like, okay, fair. Next. Like I need people. Like I can't, I appreciate my mom being like, you're God's little angel. God made you beautiful. Like, that's so beautiful. But I swear to God, like I don't need my mom to lie to me right now. I get it. Next. Brothers, go. And my brothers would be like, uh, honestly, dude, my, in general, my friends thought you were a little hotter when you were like this, but like they thought you were less hot when you were like this. I'm like, uh-huh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like, okay. Like, I like a little bit of a... <laughs> I like to be bullied just a little bit, as long as it's true. As long as it's true and it's not like because you're trying to hurt my feelings. You know, when my brothers come to me, they're like, how do I look to a girl right now? I'm like, mm, you look like a nerd who's never left his mom's basement. He's like, okay, I'll work on that. But I'm not saying it to be mean. I'm saying it so he gets his shit together. Meaning that the more attractive couples tend to start straight into a relationship and the less attractive ones tend to go from friendship to relationship. This is another reason why we might rate our own attractiveness higher compared to a stranger's assessment because we're more familiar with our positive personality traits and that influences our perceptions of the way that we look. When people come up to you and they say, I'm going to give myself a okay. fall. That was my Casey Neistat, Logan Paul podcast I'm going to watch on my own because I'm interested why Casey Neistat uh, fell out with David Dobrik. Thank you. 
I'm into the tea of that bubble. Okay. Every time I pick my teeth on stream or blow my nose, it lowers down my attractive level to some audience members. That's the subjectivity. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Ingrid, um, I'm not mean to you. Are you saying you're mean? I'm mean to you? Who's mean to you? Are you saying I'm mean to you? It's because you're mean to everybody else. I like to keep you humble, Ingrid, if you're talking to me. I like to keep you... I like to keep you humble. I wish my mom lied to me. Stop it. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. My mom, when she wants to, can be like very blunt about how we look. But genuinely, if they feel like we're being insecure, they'll be like, you're beautiful. Stop. You're gorgeous. And I'm like, oh, I don't need your like parent answer. Okay. <clears throat> it's very cute. But trust me, my mom has been more than judgy when it comes to our bodies. Middle Eastern parents, please. <clears throat> Discord says, I wonder if beauty is inherently trans subject, transjective. This is, that is, I wonder if it's all about the relationships of the subject to the objective. It's a def, it's definitely not completely subjective the way many people make it, but I keep coming up against the subjective as I think about it now. I think it must be about the relationship between the two. I definitely think that plays a role because you could argue that if I'm talking about objective, meaning like Outside of time and space, you could say that the universe would be the judgment of what is objective. And then we try to think for the universe. It's why we um, why we use God as an example of this, I believe. When we say like God knows, even if you won't tell me the truth, and even though I don't know and you don't know, God knows. I think God is the representation of the universe. The universe knows. But who is this universe, right? And I think there's something to that. I think there's something to the idea of like, when I say like, I want to know the truth, I want to know it the way that people talk about God knowing the truth. But to know it the way that God knows the truth would, would, to be, would be to be beyond like what we know as a human, which is why I understand a lot of people don't care. But I feel like that is an adventure I'd like to go on. And so I go on that adventure, like not to be God, but to see if I could have access to this mythos that we've created around God's knowing. Could I even get close to it, right? Yeah, can't escape our human biases. Mm. I wonder if you can though. So when I practice meditation, when I practice living in the present, I do feel like I lose my biases. I just can't hold on to it because I come right back to being a person. And it's not that you become a god, but you really see yourself as a part of the universe instead of something separate from it. You see yourself like literally a part of it. Which means like for a moment you can almost see yourself because you don't exist as the thing that's a part of the universe. But the moment I'm snapped back out of the, the meditative in the moment, well then I'm back to my biases and my prejudice and like everything else. So that's what I mean when I say like the mystery I want to solve is like how long can I stay in the present long enough to like eradicate my biases and that's what's curious is like, how long can I do that? And I don't seem to be doing it very long. You know what I mean? I don't do it very long. For just a moment though, when I feel that way, it's like the most amazing feeling. And again, I'm very into meditative practices. I believe, I don't believe we're the center of the universe. I'm not convinced humans aren't just a part of the universe. It's a belief, right? But to think that humans are the center of the universe is to say that our perception is knowledge, it is objective, but we know it's not. Because I know things exist outside of myself. If reality exists outside of Britney's consciousness, what is that reality? If reality exists outside of all of us, if we all died and there would be a reality, what is that reality? Like who, what is that part of the universe? That's what I wanna know. I feel that in nature sometimes, yes, I ground myself in nature. When I wanna meditate, I try to do that. Can you link the video about the David T? Sure, it's just um, it's just the impulsive podcast. The Hasty Nice Dad, if you guys don't know, was working on a, a documentary about David Dobrik, but it never came out and I've been dying to know why. And uh, he's gonna talk about it with Logan. So I was like, okay, he talked about it with other people, but I watched Logan. So I was like, oh, I'll watch that. Um. But do you get what I'm saying? Like if I know you guys exist outside of me and you have a life 
and then people exist outside of something else and the deer has a life that exists and a bear has a life that exists and we all have knowledge that everything is existing. I want to see if I can have a relationship as close as possible until the day that I die because I will die. Um, that has like an understanding of that because most of the time we are just distracted with YouTube drama and celebrities and religion and that's fine and politics and survival. That's so fine. But if I could get to the point in my life where I could just breathe and study and learn, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to play the game of life within the bubbles so I could spend a lot of my life as I age um, trying to figure out that next part of interesting knowledge because it's out there. There is, a, whether, whether we want to spend time looking for it, we know it exists because I know you exist and I know I exist. And if I cease to exist, you still exist. So something still exists. <clears throat> uh, mm, Kay says that sounds interesting only recently David Dobrik popped into my head and I was wondering what's with him what's his thing now and I saw him on one of the celeb snapchats so IG that's his thing now I guess that's his thing now yeah I heard he was like a snapchat star now which rip bro but like yeah apparently that's a thing for some people I love the concept some people have that we learn the big T truth after we die it sounds cool that we get to the end and get to actually figure it out. That sounds nice, right? It's a it's a good it's a good story. I wonder if it's true, right? Um, how do you know I truly exist? How do you know that I'm I'm not all in your head? Wake up, wake up, wake up. I believe in a truth that exists like God and universe exists, but I think it exists in an axis we humans are incapable of embodying. Very possible. But I wonder if it's not inaccessible to us in a way, <clears throat> because people have written about similar things. People have written about it. People have documented it. I feel like I felt it. I felt it. Like I felt like I have experienced it in the slightest of ways. Just the slightest of ways. When I say like a five, that's really what I mean. I mean in the slightest of ways, I have realized that like I am a part of the universe and the only perception of a micro I have is my ego. But what if the ego wasn't there? And it's like, how do I, I don't want to live without it all the time. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like that thing I felt is what they write about in religion. It's what they write. It's why we have concepts of God. I think people experience it and I think they make up constructs around it that make sense to them. And I just want it to be the true answer, not the construct. I don't want to make a construct around this thing, even though the levels are one, like I've created the levels to kind of explain it to people, but everyone has a relationship with them that is different. So that's fine too. But I think it's, I think we do, or we've had access because people have like, it's documented in, in different ways. And I think some people have psychosis and they think they're having it and they're not. And I think some people have religion and they're having it, but they're not. And then I think some people who created religion or have a relationship with it could have had it, but gave it a name. So I think like, that's what I'm interested in. Like, what is true? What is true? What is true? What is true? Cree, you said AI rated me a 7.1. Wait, did you, did you, is there like a, is there, a, is there like a, an app or something? The pursuit of this is ultimately fruitless, but very worthy. See, I don't think it's fruitless, Hada. I understand why people think it's fruitless, but I don't agree. I do not think it's, we don't have, we, I have enough evidence from everything I've read. I've read over 2,000 books. There is definitely an evidence like it's not fruitless in my opinion. I think what is fruitless is thinking that you'll be the one to fully understand or discover something before you die. I don't think we live long enough to do that. But I think like in conjunction to everyone else, we have like enough information to, to figure it out. And that's interesting. But again, I'm, I'm less interested in like being the arbiter of everything and more interested in being the person who finds like one little nugget. Sent, someone sent me, rate me an, oh, is it an app app? I don't know if I want to put an app on my phone. Rate me AI. Is it on the Google Play Store? Rate me AI. Oh, I just put IA. Is it the one that's, it's called Rate Me? Anton Tamir, I don't know that name. 3.8, it has 10K downloads. No, that can't be it. 
Hmm. Is that it? It's a website? Hold on. Rate my photo? Hmm. Ah, uh, yes, Kay. The fruitfulness is thinking that the information will automatically change your life instead of you still having to do the work after learning the info or that it means anything for humanity, right? Or that it means anything. I just think it's only, you know what I mean? Okay, wait, but I'm like, um... <sighs> When I click in rate me AI, the first one that comes up is rate my photo AI or test your attractiveness with the same icon. Rate my photo. Is it that one, guys? Rate my photo. I assume you want to give a photo that's like the most of your face. Uh, maybe one of these. No, it's too far away. Uh, it's hard to know what photo to give. I want one of my face. Uh, oh, this one, this one. This one's most of my face. Analyzing photo. Okay, guys, I used it here. I used this photo. Is this the app you're using? I used this photo. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. It says, uh, score 8.25. Compared to others, your picture is more attractive than 94% of analyzed photos. Well, that's just a lie. It only rates your face. This is not a good photo, I think. Why? It shows most of my face and my nose. Try a passport photo or two. What is what? Uh, like one that's like full straight on. Wait, this isn't a good photo. No, it should be like a passport photo, but nobody looks good in those. Um, I don't think I have a passport photo on my phone or anything close to it. Upload a new photo. Um, like I'm not gonna have a passport photo on my phone. Uh. Um, no, all of these, um, all of these have like makeup or these one. Okay. This one doesn't have makeup. Oh, but this one has my tits. Okay. So maybe not that one. Um, all these are, nope. These are, nope. Mm, guys, I don't have a passport -y photo. Uh, this one too, huh? This one wouldn't work. Oh, this one rated lower. Look at this one. This one rated me a 6.41. This one has my boobs in it too. But this one only rated me a 6.41. Oh, here. Okay, use a thumbnail. Okay, hold on, hold on. I got Yeah, I got you. I got you. Wait, the one with um the one with the uh, Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. Um hold on, I got you. So Okay, like a random, here's one of the thumbnail photos I took today. 5.49, but this one's really, really dark and really, really small. It's like zoomed out to hell. Mm. Well, there you go. I'm 16% more attractive than people according to this photo. There you go. <laughs> I've been hit. I'm sorry, I don't have a, okay, what about the photo of me in Indiana? Is that... Hold on, could that work? Like, um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put it on that girl's face looking crazy. Okay, what if I did like the, okay, here's my, here's the one of me in Indiana. <laughs> I don't think this is gonna work. Oh, 7.79, okay. 
Here's me in Indiana. Can you just take a screenshot of just your 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 phase right now? No. With a working and that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm objectively a five or a six. Pans out. Pans out. <clears throat> yeah, I think that makes sense, right? Like, compare me to the hottest, hottest person on the planet. You think I'm a nine? I love that for you guys. No. You know, Indiana is a 10. True. <clears throat> That's so true. I would say I'm probably like a six. Um, and I'll probably be a little like, I mean, I'm taking care of my body more. It depends. Like. It depends because, like, as the healthier I get, I think the more attractive I'll go, of course, because, like, I think health correlates to it. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah. You know, if you like me, you like me. And if you don't, you don't. Mm -hmm. You at least a seven. You got that body girl. I don't think I'm a seven right now. But I think after I'm done working out, I'll go up a peg. Maybe use the one from the last podcast. Do I still have that picture on my computer? Um, nope. Oh wait, maybe I do. Yeah, the blue dress one. <clears throat> so this one, but see how it's far away? It's still too far away. Okay, hold on. What if I did a closer one? Here, this one's more straight on, actually. Okay, this one's more straight on. 5.72, but it's still really tiny. Eh, well, you know. What are you going to do, guys? What are you going to do? Okay, now that we're done rating each other and all of this, overall, I think beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I think there is such a thing as like an objective attractiveness in the universe. And I'm not sure we'll ever have access to it, but I will pursue for the rest of my life this relationship with what is objective. Because I do believe in big T objective, big T truth. And little t truth is our subjective experience, right? With this, Subjectivity is so beautiful. I love it. It's what makes us us. It's what makes us unique in so many ways. But objective, I think, is that relationship you're having when you see yourself as a part of the universe rather than separate from it. And often our subjectivity really forces ourselves to be separate from it, which is like so interesting, even when it comes to what's attractive, as those studies show. I am separate from other people, so I'm a 10. I think of myself as a 10. It's like, mm, you know, mm, you know. And again, maybe I'm just a glutton for for like objectivity but man that's why i fell in love with rand in the beginning because i was like oh my god but she's not objective she's playing this subjective as much as anyone else you know <clears throat> i mean Brittany's very attractive to me but i also can't judge because i feel like i already know her in a way but that's that makes sense girl to somebody i'm a 10 it's just like but to the universe am i a 10 or you know what i'm saying to the universe though to the universe. Subjectivity is what connects us totally. Absolutely. In my head, in real life I'm in bed. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm Sick of thinking, yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. Da, 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 da.